Hey guys, how many third gen Camaro slash Firebird owners here have their seat belt buttons looking like this? Faded and scratched. I am sure that many of you do, considering that these are now a minimum of 30 years old. Now, with that said, how would you like to have your seatbelt buttons going from this to this? Well, if you said yes, then you've come to the right place. In today's video, I'm going to show you exactly how you can do that with the GM seatbelt upgrade kit that you can easily buy online. All right, let's get on to the video. Now, the kit can be purchased online for around $30 US plus shipping and handling. So this is what I got when I purchased the kit. In the kit, you get the following. You get four of the plastic GM replacement buttons, which being that they're GM, they are identical to the ones in your car. Now next, you get four identical replacement springs. And finally, you get an additional upgrade parts. These are four metal guide clips to help reinforce the seatbelt guide. Now, so just so you can see, here are the originals on the left, and on the right are the ones from the kit. And as you can clearly see, they are the exact match. These are GM after all. So let's see what kind of tools we're going to need for this repair. Actually, just one thing. A butter knife. That's right, just a butter knife. So with that said, let's get started. Now here I've taken out my seat belt out of the car just to make it a little bit easier to film. Obviously you don't have to do that, you can do that right from inside your car. Now here you can see after 30 years my belts were showing a little bit of age. Now looking at the seat belt, most of you probably would immediately assume that we are to open up by prying from the sides. Now you would be incorrect because in fact you would likely break it. What you need to do is pull off the button itself and the way we do that is to use the butter knife to carefully pry off the button from the outside of the seat belt. Now you want to be careful here because there's a spring under tension and it could easily fly right across the room. Now when I did it, luckily mine was actually held in place, so I just used a butter knife to carefully compress it and remove the spring from the assembly. And so here we can see the inside of the seatbelt assembly. This little gray tab on the bottom is where the spring sits around. Now the part that was originally raised up by the spring likely have fallen down. So we just need to gently lift it up. Once you've done that, use your fingers to hold it up while you insert the new spring from the kit. Next, you're going to place it on the top of the little bump on the bottom, compress the spring, and gently slide it under the sliding piece, as you can see here. Alright, so now it's time to place the new button on. Most people likely would assume that you're going to place it like this. Again, that is wrong. In fact, it's placed like this. And the reason for that is because, as you can see closely, there is a notch on either side. These actually slide onto the ledge, which aligns and helps to hold it in place. There are two clips under that actual button, but the button itself won't sit properly unless the two notches align properly. 
Now because of the pressure of the spring, it can at times start to push this black piece backwards towards the wall, leaving no room for the notches to sit onto the ledge. So what I found is, if you slide the butter knife between it, it'll help to create that needed gap. Then all you need to do is just line the longer part of the front up in front of the spring, centered in the assembly, and align the notches so they go onto the ledge. Just push the button up against the butter knife once it's on the ledge and push down on the button until the two clips under the button engage. It can be a little tricky because you're also dealing with a spring that can easily give way. It's not really all that hard, just that it can take a couple tries at times. You'll know when it's done right as the button will sit flush and the button pushes down with ease. Now, with that part all done, all we have left to do is place the new seatbelt metal guide upgrade that is included in the kit. Now, the guide can't be any easier. You simply align it and push it until it clicks in. Each of the metal guides have two clips that simply clip onto the rectangle where the GM trademark is. And there we have it. You replaced your belt button and even upgraded to include a metal belt guide. Now, all you have to do is repeat the same steps for your other belts. Hey guys, if you like the videos in my channel, I would really appreciate it if you could please hit the subscribe button. Also, hit the little bell icon in order to get instant notification whenever I post any new videos on my channel. And, of course, be sure to like, comment, and share the videos. Now, with all that out of the way, let's get back to the video, shall we? And here, I'm going to show you me replacing one of my rear seats in the car. And there we have it, all done. Clicks right in. All right, check out those results. So I went from this to this. You too can easily upgrade your seatbelt buttons. Again, it's not that hard, but it can at times require just a bit of patience. But I'm sure once you're done, you'll be all happy with the results. All right, guys, I enjoyed making this video for you and just want to take the time out to remind you to subscribe as I have a lot more content on the way. So you definitely don't want to miss out. So be sure to hit the bell icon and that way you'll be notified each time I post a video. All right, guys, thanks for watching. See you next time. All right, and with that, I'd like to conclude this video. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And be sure to click the little bell icon to be notified of each new video I post. Thank you for watching and till next time.